For many environmentalists, the approval of the extension of the N2 toll road down the wild coast puts an end to northern Ponderland as a conservation area. The still to be constructed road cuts through the so-called greenfield section, crossing spectacular gorges impacting on vegetation of international biodiversity importance. It will open up wild and untamed country and could facilitate the mining of mineral sands by an Australian company. It takes hundreds of thousands of years for mineral deposits like this to, to find their way into estuaries such as this one. But right now, it's these mineral deposits between here and Mzamba, about 22 kilometers away, that are causing a great deal of excitement and anger. A recent meeting in Mtata, hosted by the O.R. Tambo municipality, attempted to workshop such issues. We are saying, let us converge here in Ogham and not speak through the papers. The mayor was referring to Wes's Kathy Kay and the 20,000 signatures objecting to the road. She also had her own bent on biodiversity. The list is long. It includes ants and flies. I'm saying those 30 signatures, 30,000 signatures must be here today. Yeah. And they must ask us, who asked them to represent us when we voted in 1994? I don't think the debate is about the toll road. I think the debate is around the strategy for development. The environment, as I know the mayor was talking about it in a different context, but the diversity, the plants and the animals, the, even the ants and the flies, <laughs> the biodiversity of this area is unique. Biodiversity and endemism are terms which still need to be popularized. Diversity in nature gives it options. And by protecting biodiversity here in Ponderland, the community has benefited from such an option, an ecotourism option. This is the most incredible, the most convincing argument for, for estuary conservation. I mean, just take a look out here. There must be 500 to 1,000 kingfish, average size 20 to 30 kilograms, milling around here. And I suppose it, it, it argues for, for the program that's being run here, that nobody, nobody fishes in this particular area. They only start catching them, or trying to catch them, once they work their way down towards the sea and they go on a, on a hunting expedition. Ufudu is a fly fishing operation, which utilizes the kingfish in a sustainable and profitable way. The ripples are a telltale that the fish are on the move. There are six rods on the water, each accompanied by a guide. Conditions are near perfect. The delight of the first catch is made to look so easy as the host tactfully guides his client, guaranteeing his bag. Not too many years ago, these kingfish were being hammered by uncontrolled fishing. With the various environmental authorities' blessing, this tag and release program was introduced as part of an estuarine management plan. As small as it is, it transfers more than a thousand rand a day into the community, while at the same time transferring skills to local people keen on ecotourism. Keep him up the other way. The area that could be mined starts three kilometers north of here. <laughs> to the south is Mkambati. Ecotourism developments there and to the north are only just beginning to realize their potential. Horse trails have been developed and with the help of monies from international organizations like the European Union, people from all over the world have come to know northern Ponderland. You see, the mining will take place from Zamba River, 22 kilometers to Skombe River. This is where our trail is happening. 
so they will only live th three kilometers in our trail. If mining is to go ahead, Amadiba horse trails and hikes will be history. Because amongst other disturbances, to extract these mineral sands, millions of litres of fresh water will be required. And that will impact on the estuaries and wetlands long after the predicted 15-year span of mining. It's hard to believe that rehabilitation will restore biodiversity. And there's bound to be enormous impact from the infrastructure such operations are known to require. In total, five estuaries will be impacted on. The trails camp that I stayed in is sensibly set back from the coast. A rustic but comfortable place run by the people that farm in the surrounding hills. About 500 people are employed benefiting from tourism. According to our guide, it's the older folk that are leaning toward the mining. Yes. Yeah, the younger people don't see the same way as the old people they see. Why, why do the young people see it differently and what do they see? It's because most of the young people are educated, so they understand the tourism. Many people have made the, the enemies because they were fighting against uh, this mining. Do you sometimes feel that people are maybe accepting money from... Yeah, I feel so that there are some people that are accepting the money from the mining people. If you were, were living in this area, you could see it. And the road? What do you think of the road, the N2? Oh, the N2. Yeah, that road is very important to the people. Yeah. The link between the mining and the road is still theory. The Department of Environment and Tourism says that tourism is dependent on the road. Uh, we have to come in with a clear, determined strategy to make ecotourism work. And it's got to work at scale. One imagines that they're referring to a very different tourism, to the riding and hiking and fishing experiences I enjoyed. All my tourism experiences were made possible by a community-run organization, whose leader and his brother have been more than talking to TEM, the White Australian Mining Consortium. The TEM have formed up a prospecting committee which will look to the problems and appointment of the people temporarily to work for prospecting and appointed the coordinator. That person was, is our treasurer of the Amadiba Coastal Community Trust because we don't mind about prospecting because we have never taken a decision for mining. So you personally so feel that those things, the mining and the N2, mightn't be the best option? I can't support mining and end to an ecotourism without a good education. Then after that dialogue, or if you have given me the information, I will take the decision. I have never taken any decision now which way should we follow. I'm just listening to the people that they said. I was their guest here, but my presence as a journalist was being met with suspicion. You were asked, did we work with Kathy Kay? Why the journalists are always worried now about uh, our development here at Bomatiba? Why are they worried? Do you think the journalists are against what you're doing? Is that the feeling that you get? No, no. Mm. But on the other hand, I don't know the real need of the journalists. You know, what, what, what Madiba was talking about yeah. was this whole situation needs more information. So if you are staying at uh, Gauteng, you are always talking about us. It's unfair. But if you see the KVK East house, is there, but the, the highway, uh, no, highway is a highway there. They are not complaining about that highway. There. She must come yeah. and present yeah. his job. Would you, you obviously would like the N2 and the mining to happen, right? If we can convince us mm. or to train us about negative impact, positive impact to social needs yeah. which are yeah. you want a highway yeah. next to you so it's easy to go to 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 Durban or wherever you want the mining because it'll bring money in it'll make people richer is is that what you're saying no 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 KFK must come and train us no, no, I understand yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's what we need now she must training us about the environment issues and must bring some more money to fight the poverty according to the environment so even she must tell us about the, the negative impact and positive impact of the mining and N2 and so on. Is nobody informing you about those, those the no, potential no, of the, of the no, no. Nobody? No. You're like just hearing an argument happening yes, in yes, the media? Yes. 
the role of the media couldn't have been clearer. 5050's presence in Mtata, a few days later, at the invitation of the Department of Environmental Affairs, is much appreciated. This particular land use, and that have covered the in nature reserve, but... The most hotly contested session had been the one discussing land use. You can see there's a homestead here and there's grazing land here. No, also, here. I have no doubt that sometime next year, depending on what people choose uh, as the form of conservation, we will need to put some form of legal protection on the table. If the road is authorised in the absence of those, I think it would be a disaster. Chippy Olver left early to witness the installation of the long-awaited biodiversity bill. Hello. Two weeks later, his department has given the road fine, the go-ahead. Registered legislation to protect the area remains grey and unclear. If Big Brother decides it's going to happen, then you can stand on your head, it's going to happen. And if something is destroyed in the end, and they will have to stand and answer for those decisions. Uh, we ourselves have never been against it. It's just a question of exactly where it goes. The reality of the matter is that this is one area where we all feel that has got to be opened up for all of us. I think that the fear that a lot of people have is <clears throat> if the road goes ahead and there aren't proper controls in place, um, people will just uh, start all sorts of businesses. Some are ready, those who will be putting garages along, art centers are along the road. All the spin-offs that you will be, will be thinking of. But the most benefit is that I want to assure you that O.R. Tambo is the richest municipality.